Use this opportunity to uh, wish you a Merry Christmas, and I pray that you have a good Merry Christmas coming up this week. Take your Bibles this morning and turn to the book of Jeremiah. I've been trying to get out of preaching this message on Jeremiah all week long, but every time I turn around, the Lord lays this verse on my heart. And so I'm going to preach what I feel that God wants me to preach this morning. Somebody says, aren't you going to preach a Christmas message? Yes, I am. This is a Christmas message this morning. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 2. Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 32. Jeremiah 2.32. And this is my text this morning. Can a maid forget her ornaments? Or a bride her attire. Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray this morning that you'll bless the preaching and teaching of your word. And I pray you just give me a clear mind, wash my mind in the blood of Jesus Christ, and wash my heart in the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, please fill me with the Holy Spirit this morning that I may preach your word and strengthen and help unto every soul here this morning. Lord, I pray that you'll do the work through me. Lord, help me to hide behind the cross and get out of the way, Father. And I pray the Holy Spirit will use me even today to encourage and strengthen and uh, maybe even the saved will turn from their sins and come to Jesus Christ. And today will be the day of their salvation. Lord, I pray you would bless the service this morning. In Jesus' name I pray, and for his sake, amen. Now this morning, I want to preach on this text here. This text says, can a maid, uh, that'd be a young uh, girl or a young woman, forget her ornaments. Now the ornaments are these little bitty earrings here like this that she has here in her ears, and little bitty rings she has on her fingers, and a little bracelet she has on her finger, and a little bit of a necklace she has around here like. Can a maid forget those things? The answer is no, she can't. No, she can't. Or uh, a bride, her attire. Then that bride comes in and it's their wedding day, and she comes in. Does she forget her bridal gown? 
Did she forget to put on all her makeup? Did she forget to be all ready to go that today I'm going to get married? Whoops, I just forgot it. <coughs> no, she don't do that. Amen? She don't forget it. She don't forget it. But my text says, Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. Days without number. First of all, I want you to notice here it says, Yet my people have forgotten me. Now I want you to know, uh, turn your Bibles to Psalms chapter 9 and verse 17, which is a famous Bible text in the book of Psalms. In uh, Psalms chapter uh, 9, verse 17, uh, there's a great famous verse that we've always preached on, and it says, Psalms 9, verse 17 says, The wicked should be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. And of course, we take it for granted that unshaved people forget God day in and day out, and year in and year out, they forget God many times. And uh, all nations that forget God will be turned into hell. And we just take it for granted that unsaved people forget God. And, and most of the time that's what we're thinking. But back in Jeremiah chapter 2, I want you to notice in verse 32 it says, Yet my people, my people, then I want to preach on the, on the aspect of God's people forgetting God and forgetting the Lord a day after day after day, and here it says, uh, days without number. Days without number. You say, what does that mean, days without number? That means when well, you forget God this day, and you forget God the next day, and you forget God the next day, and you forget Him the next day, and 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 there's a whole bunch of days in between you forget the Lord, and you say, oh, I better go and serve the Lord, and then you come back to the Lord, and you remember the Lord, and then you forget Him again for a long stretch of time. I know some Christians, they forget God from one Easter Sunday to the next Easter Sunday. And from one Easter Sunday to the next Easter Sunday. And then from one Easter Sunday to the next Easter Sunday. And that's the only time they remember the Lord. Amen? If you don't know them, I do. <laughs> and they just forget the Lord that long. 365 days out of the year, they forget the Lord. Big, long stretch in there. This country's plumb full of those kind of Christians. And they just forget the Lord is what they do. You go up here at this anaconda plant and you go in that anaconda plant in there and they have a great big sign that says three, uh, 356 days without a lost time accident. Uh, or, or to say 266 days, no lost time accident. You go down to the big plants down south and I guess every big plant down south has a big old sign somewhere out in the parking lot or up on the side of a building somewhere that says 365 days or 265 days, no lost time from the job. I, I know what it is. The guy's about half get killed and they make him come to work anyway and just sit around there and everything else. And I realize it's just to make, get that numbers up there and big old thing like that. But there's a so many days, no lost time. Well, you know what it is? It's a lot of God's people. They have forgotten the Lord days without number. It adds up one day, two days, three days, four days, five days, six days a year, six months, and right on, just add days without number. They forgot their Lord. You say, Brother Bemis, how can anybody forget God? How can a man just forget God? I'll tell you what you do. You just forget Him in the fact that you don't think about Him in your play. You don't think about Him in your work. You don't think about Him in your job. You don't think about him in what you do from day to day. You don't consider him and you've forgotten the Lord. You know what you remember? We remember him on his birthday. Christmas. We got to go to church on Christmas. It's his birthday. The Lord's birthday. We remember him on his birthday and come around. This is a birthday message. <laughs> and come around there and remember the Lord on those days. No, you know what you ought to do? You ought to remember the Lord today. And then remember the Lord the next day, and remember the Lord the next day, and remember him every day of your life, 365 days out of the year. My text this morning says, Can a maid forget her uh, ornaments, or a bride her attar? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. Then what makes a man forget God? What makes a Christian forget God? What makes him forget the Lord? There's many things that do. You know, some Christians say, if you forget God, God forgets you. Well, that's not true. Take your Bibles and turn to Isaiah chapter 49. 
Turn to Isaiah chapter 49 and look at verse 15. Isaiah chapter 49 and let's read verse uh, 15. And it says, Can a woman forget her suckling child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Though uh, he said, can a woman forget her baby that she raised up from a little baby? Can a woman forget her suckling child? Can she just forget all about him? The Bible says, yea, she can. She sure can. She can forget. But then the Lord says, but yet I will not forget thee. Although you can forget God, days without number, I'll tell you something, God doesn't forget you. God doesn't forget you, even though you do forget him. Now I want to preach on some things that causes us to forget God. Throughout the Bible, there are some things that causes this to happen in our lives. And I want you to note these things. Take your Bible and turn to the first one. It's found in the book of Deuteronomy. Take your Bibles and turn to the book of Deuteronomy. Now you want to note these things because this is what causes a man to forget God. Days without number. Deuteronomy chapter 6. And let's look at uh, <coughs> uh, verse 11. Uh, let's pick up verse 10. Deuteronomy 6, 10. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swore unto thy fathers and to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob to give great and godly cities which thou buildest not. The Lord saying, when you get back, when you get on up into the land of Canaan and you get out of this wilderness and I carry you on up into the land of Canaan and you take over the whole land of Canaan, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of houses that you didn't build, somebody else built. And I'm going to give you a whole bunch of vineyards that you didn't plant, somebody else planted them. And I'm going to give you a whole bunch of crops that somebody else took care of and I'm going to give you what belongs to them and I'm going to take it away from them and I'm going to give it to you. Verse uh, 10, I mean verse 11. And houses full of good things. He's going to give the children of Israel those things when they come into the land of Egypt. You know what? That's God has done that to you. God has given you a house full of good things. He gave you a house full of good things. He gave you a good table and a good chair and a good couch and a good washing machine and a good stove. And he gave you a house plumb full of good things. All right? Which thou fillest not. And while and wells digged, which thou diggest not, and vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when now watch it, when thou shalt have eaten and be full, then, then, beware, lest thou forget the Lord. When did he tell you to beware? When he said, When thou shalt have eaten and be full. When God comes along you and blesses you with a good car and blesses you with a home and blesses you with plenty of food and blesses you with comfort and blesses you with all the blessings that he pours out from heaven upon you. And you got everything you need and there's nothing you need. And all everything's supplied and you're full and you eat three square meals a day. No problem. Then look what he said. Then beware. Then beware. Least thou forget the Lord. You know what we have a tendency to do? We have a tendency to forget God when everything is just going in good and easy and fine and no problems and no trials and no heartaches in life and man all your needs are supplied right up to the full. You have a tendency to just say well why do I don't have nothing to pray about? I don't can't find anything to pray about. I got everything I need. I'll tell you what you do. You forget God. Days without number and days without number. You just go day after day after day after day after day after day and you forget the Lord. Why? Because you don't have uh, the bills coming in up over top of your head. You don't have the troubles coming in and the heartaches coming in and the pains coming in and everything just going nice and smooth. You forget God. You know what I say to you this morning, children of God and child of God, boy, when the troubles come, you better turn to the Lord because many times that's why the troubles are there is to make you turn to God. 
Woe unto the Christian that don't turn to God when the trouble's coming, when the heartache's coming, when the loneliness come. Because that many times are given to you to take you out of your placency and take you out of your, your lack of need. Many a Christian said to me in the, in the years, Brother Bemis, I don't see any need for uh, why to pray. What do I pray about? Brother Bemis, what do I pray about? I think to myself many times, I say, uh, Lord's going to give you something to pray about. Lord's going to give you something to pray about. You asking me what to pray about? Lord's going to give you something to pray about before it's all over with. I'll, I'll tell you something. A lot of God's people, they got all their supplies made. They got their good food in their stomachs and they got a happy home and there are no problems in the family and they got cars taken care of and the houses taken care of and everything supplied to the full at the time you want to beware because at the time you're going to forget the Lord. You're just going to go your own way and just forget it. And you're not going to be down on your knees bawling and crying and weeping and, and do the praying through that you ought to do. You're just going to be up and busy and just taking care of everything, going on smooth and everything. Your life is just fine and dandy and, and swell and nice and good. Well, I'll tell you something. You better beware because you're going to forget God. You say, oh, Brother Bemis, I couldn't forget God. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, yes, you can. You can forget about Him. Days without number, just too busy doing your own thing, going your own thing, going through life. My people have forgotten me. Days without number, prosperity, material prosperity will make you forget God. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 8 and look at verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and look at verse 10. Deuteronomy 8 10. When, look at the word when, when. Thou hast eaten and are full. Then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for good land which he hath given thee. Beware, there it is again, when you're full and you're eating and everything's going good, when, beware, that thou forget not the Lord thy God. Then what a man has to be careful of is when he gets into position and everything's going good, he has to get to the position, make sure that he remembers what God's done for him. Uh, God is, you never always forget where God raised you up and saved you from the pits that he saved you from and took you up out of the mire of clay and took you out of the pits of hell and set you up on the gate of heaven what God done for you. You ought to always remember that. I go down every now and then I go around, I go to one of these bars down here and I drive behind the bar and I sit there a while and I look into that bar. And I just sit there and I'm going to, I don't go inside, but I sit there and look at, look at that thing. And I think, no, that's what God saved me from. God saved me from that. God took me from that thing and saved me from that. And he cleansed me from it and took it out of my heart and took it out of my mind and took it out of my soul and he saved me from that thing. That's where I'd be if it wasn't for God saving me. And you ought to remember those things. Remember that God took you up and where he brought you from when God set you up on the hill and gives you all these things. Don't remember you got it from the Lord, brother. Let me give you an illustration. Yeah, several years, many years ago, back in 1929, Japan had an earthquake and had one of the greatest earthquakes the world has ever seen in Japan in 1923. And Yokohama, every building standing in Yokohama was leveled to the ground. And uh, the great city of Tokyo, three quarters of the building was leveled. And there was 300,000 people died in that earthquake in 1923 in Japan. And all they sent out that went over the radio and all the things in the, in the world started sending food. And America got up millions of dollars worth of food and sent it to Japan. Millions of dollars worth of food come into Japan. And the Japanese said, we'll never forget, we'll never forget your kindness, we'll never forget your love, we'll never forget what you've done for us. That was in 1923. You know what they did? 18 years later, they sent airplanes and bombers to Pearl Harbor and destroyed the American fleet in Pearl Harbor. They forgot. They forgot. They forgot. And you know what we do as human beings? God is good for us and God picks us up out of the miry clay and picks us up and saves us from hell. And you know what we do? We forget. We forget. We just go through our lives and we just go through there and the whole time we do our own thing. We live our own way. We do what we want to do and we just go down our own road of enjoyment and you think we're going to hell by the way we acted. You know what they've done? They've forgotten God. 
forgotten the Lord. He just forgot all about him. Days without number. I ask you this morning, you remember the Lord? You remember the Lord? Or did you go two or three weeks or four or five weeks or six months or seven months and you just done your own thing and worked your own way and done your own job and you didn't consider the Lord about nothing in your whole life? You say, I'm, you're saying I'm lost? No, I'm saying you're saved and born again, washed in the blood of Jesus. You just forgot the Lord. You just forgot the Lord. You just let him slip your mind. You say, oh, you can't do things like that. Yeah, we sure do. We sure do. Days without number. I was asked to come down here and preach at the Flathead Christian School. And they said, we want you to preach down here. And they give me a date. And one of the uh, men there asked me. And I said, okay, I'll be there. A couple of weeks went by and he reminded me. He said, now, you're going you're gonna to give that chapel down there. Now, don't forget it. Okay, and I, 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 gotta, I, I won't forget. I wrote it down, you know. And a few more weeks went by. And he'd say, you haven't forgot? No, I haven't forgot. Wrote it down. A few more weeks went by. I guess it was about four or five months that he told me. Just he reminded me about five or six times down through there. Come up one Monday morning. I come in there and I run in there. And I had a beard on, you know. I hadn't shaved for a day or, you know, or something. I was working somewhere and I had a beard on. Had my old grubby work clothes on. I was getting ready to do some work, you know. And I walked in there and he looked at me sort of funny like. He said, uh, are you ready, preacher? And I said, ready for what? He said, you're supposed to preach in chapel in five minutes. I said, what? He said, yeah, you're supposed to preach in chapel in five minutes. I said, and I went like this. I thought, man, I am shaved. I haven't studied nothing. I don't. And I looked at him and said, I forgot. And he looked at me kind of like that, you know. And he, and he said, well, I said he wouldn't forget. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm sorry, I just forgot. You say, you wouldn't think a man could forget something as important as preaching the word of God, would you? But we do. We do. And that's what you do. You forget God days without number. Days you go in one day and one day and the next 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 day. Days without number. You forget all about the Lord. You don't consider Him in your work. You don't consider Him in your labor. You don't consider Him in your fun. You don't consider Him in nothing. You just go your way and do your own thing. You forget God days without number. Again, take your Bible and turn to Jeremiah. Here's another way people forget God. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 23. Now turn to the verse. Jeremiah. <coughs> Jeremiah. In Jeremiah chapter 23, I want you to note a way that people forget God. Jeremiah chapter 23. And I want you to read verse... <coughs> 27, Jeremiah 23, 27. Which think to cause my people to forget me. Now underline it says, to cause my people to forget me. Now what causes God's people to forget the Lord? All right. Now what causes God's people to forget the Lord? Let's pick up the verse in front of it. Verse 27 says, uh, Which think to cause my people to forget me, my name, by their dreams. Let's go back, verse 25. I have heard that with the prophets saying, They prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Uh, get verse 21. I have not sent this prophet, yet they run. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesy. Then the passage is talking about somebody getting up and saying, The Lord says, the Lord says, the Lord says, when the Lord ain't said that at all. And it's getting about some prophet of God. What prophet of God is not called by God, but he's getting up and saying God called him. I'll tell you what it is, preachers. Preachers. Preachers that get up in the pulpit and cause God's people to forget the Lord. You know what kind of preachers those are? Those are preachers that ain't Bible preachers, brother. They ain't Bible preachers. You give me a Bible preacher and he'll make you remember the Lord. You give me a preacher who ain't a Bible preacher and he'll make you forget the Lord. You know what these preachers do? I hear them all the time. 
These preachers get up here over a tape or over a radio and they'll come down through there and they'll say, a better translation should be, and then they'll take and now mess with the verse and take the verse and twist the verse around. And they'll come around and say, well, that's not really supposed to be that way. That is translated wrong. That's wrong. And they'll take that thing and cut that thing and slice that thing all to pieces. You know what that man is doing to your heart and mind and soul, my dear friend? He's making you forget God. He's making you forget the Lord. That's what we have in this country today. We have a lack of Bible preachers anymore. Guys, you'll get up and thump the Bible. I mean, they call them Bible thumpers. Okay, you can call me a Bible thumper. I'm, that's fine and dandy, brother. I'm a Bible thumping preacher. And I want to remind you to serve God day in and day out and day in and day out. And don't forget Him from now to Monday. You know what Christians do? They remember, I know some Christians remember God on Sunday and forget Him Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and they remember Him again on Saturday. And so they come to church on Sunday and then they forget Him Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday and remember Him again. They only remember Him once a week. Once a week. They didn't go seven days. They only go seven days. Oh, I remember the Lord. Go another seven days. Oh, remember the Lord. Oh, another seven. Oh, remember the Lord. But well, I tell you something, you know what you ought to do? You ought to remember God on Monday morning when you go to work and the boss gives you down the road. And you ought to remember God on Tuesday when you can't get the washing machine working. Amen? And you ought to remember God when you have a flat tire on Wednesday. Amen? And you ought to remember God when the fellow on the gas tells a dirty joke and it stings your ears. You ought to remember God. Amen? 365 days out of the day. You ought to remember God. Uh, and a preachers destroy your knowledge of God and your remembering the Lord from day in and day out and day in and day out. It really, it really gets my hide. I get to the place where I don't like to hear preachers. And I'll, I keep on trying to listen to them because I'm looking for a blessing. And I'll listen to every preacher I can listen to. And I look for them and I look for preachers you know, where I can hear a guy that will preach to me and preach my hide off of me. And tear me up and get me just mad and straight. I like him just to pull the hide right off of me. I like one of them preachers come down there and I think he's, I'm in the pulpit and he's sticking his finger out at me like that. <laughs> sticking his finger out at me like that. You say, why? Because I want one to remind me of my, where I am and what I'm doing and what I'm not doing and what I should be doing. And woe to these preachers that get up there and smile, you know. And give this good night sweet smile. It's glad to have you folks today. Glad to see you here. Give you this good, nice, sweet smile. Going to give a message on love today. Let's just love, love, love. And they talk about love of Christmas and love of that and love of this and love of that and love of this. I think those guys ain't got an ounce of love in them. I really do. I don't think they love some. If you love God, how come you chew His word to pieces and spit it out? If you love the Holy Spirit, how come you talk about Him that way? Tell me some of these guys love the Bible, love the Bible. I'll tell you some, they hate me. You say, how come they hate me? I'll tell them they're wrong. And I'll tell them to their face, they just don't show up. That's it. <laughs> they just don't show up around here. All right, again, uh, another thing that makes you forget God. Turn to Isaiah 51. Turn to Isaiah 51. Turn to Isaiah chapter 51 and look at verse 12. Isaiah 51, 12 says... I, even I, am he that comforteth you. Who art thou that thou shouldest uh, be afraid of man? Now look at Afraid of man that should die, and of ma uh, son of man which shall be made as grass. And forget, forgettest the Lord thy maker. Now what made him forget? Verse 12. Being afraid of man. You know one thing that will make you forget God? Is when you're so afraid of what other people think. When you're so afraid of other men. The Bible says the fear of man bringeth a snare. When you get afraid of what people are going to think about you. You're not worried about what God thinks you. When a Christian knocks on the door. And so afraid of what the people are going to think on the other side of the door. That he doesn't care what God thinks right beside him. And right in his own heart. What God thinks about him. When you get afraid of other people, you're going to forget God. 
You're going to forget him to that day and that day and that day and that day. You know, when you have somebody in mind, you care what they think about. You care how they feel. I do something, I said, oh, what would my wife think about? Amen? Come on, men. Wouldn't you say, what does my wife think about? it? Amen? Good, thank you. Every one of you should have said amen. And uh, when you care about what God thinks, you want to know what the Lord thinks about it. You go to the Lord and you ask Him what He thinks about it. Amen? And when you forget the Lord, you don't go to Him and ask Him what He thinks about it. You might ask your wife, you might ask somebody else, but you don't ask the Lord what He thinks about it. I'll tell you, when you remember the Lord, you said, now, Lord, what do you think about that? What do you think, Lord? What do you think about that? Do you think, how do you feel about that, Lord? Just how do you feel? Just let me know. You think I'm sinning? Lord, just, just tell me. Just tell me. Just tell me if I'm sinning, Lord, just, just outright show me. Just tell me if I'm sinning. You know what the Lord to do? If you'll remember the Lord, just take that thing to the Lord and say, oh, okay, Lord, what do you think about it? You know what the Lord do? Within a week, God will say, no, that's a sin. You're sinning. You're sinning right there. You're sinning. See, I don't know if it's one. Ask him and find out. You don't think he'd tell you that it's a sin or not? I guarantee you, if it's a sin, he'll tell you. But you don't have to ask me. Ask him. Ask him. Take your Bibles and turn to Isaiah. Turn to Isaiah chapter 17. Look at verse 10. Isaiah 17, 10. Isaiah 17, 10. Some things that cause you to forget God. Isaiah 17, 10 says... Because thou hast forgotten the God of thy salvation and hast not been mindful of the rock. And mindful of the rock. The rock is the Lord Jesus Christ. The rock is Him. And then it says, Thou hast forgotten the God of thy salvation because you wasn't mindful of the Lord. If you don't keep your mind on the Lord and keep your mind on some things that God shows you and remember some things that God shows you, you know what you do? You forget as you go out the front door. I wonder how many of you forget everything you hear in this church as you walk out the front door. I wonder if you walk out the front door, you say, now, that's over with. On to the next thing. What's next? You know what that is? That's forgetfulness. That's just forgetfulness. You're making yourself forget. You've gotten such a habit of forgetting what God has done to you and forgetting so quick and so fast when you walk out the front door, you forgot 10 steps from the front door. You forgot what I preached about. You made yourself forget. All right, I'll prove that. Turn to James chapter 1. Turn to James chapter 1, and in James chapter 1, Look at verse 24. James 1, 24 says, For if a man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he behold himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Now notice he said, uh, Goeth his way, his way, his way. That's what caused you to forget God. You know what it caused you to forget God? Go on your own way. Go on your own way as you like. Say, no, well, I'm going to do this this week. Well, wait a minute. How about say, Lord, what do you want me to do this week? Instead of I'm going to do this week and all week long and do your way and do your thing all week long and when next Sunday comes you say, okay, no, Lord, today I'll do your thing. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you done your way and your thing. You ever hear the expression, do your own thing? How about doing God's thing? How about doing God's thing and going God's way and not forget the Lord days without number? Days without number. Again, I, I'm so terribly forgetful, and I realize it, it comes a sin. I forget when, how old I am. Somebody say, preach, how old are you? I think, well, am I 41 or am I 42? Am I 42 or 41? Sometimes I'll say, well, I'm 42. And my wife will say, no, no, dear, 41. <laughs> 41. And uh, I'll come along and be a day for her birthday or something. I'll say, well, is, is her birthday going to be today or tomorrow? 
Is it today or tomorrow? Is it the 14th or the 15th or the 16th? And I'll have to say, is it the 12th? Is it this day or is it that day? No, that's anniversary mixed up with the uh, birthday. No, birthday and anniversary. Which one's which? And I have it written down somewhere, but I forgot where I wrote it down. <laughs> and all these things you've got to remember. And I'll tell you something, brother. You're, you get in the habit of forgetting. And then you know what you'll do? You'll start using the forgetting as an excuse. You'll say, I just forgot. And you think, boy, that was a good one. Sure got out of that. I forgot. I forgot. You know what the Lord thinks of forgetfulness? There's some things you better forget. You better forget sin. You better forget sin. And you better forget your failures. And you better forget plenty. You better forget your heartaches and your troubles. You better forget them. The fact of Philippians chapter 3 says, forgetting those things which are behind, Paul says. But I'll tell you something. You better not forget God. You better not forget Him. You better remember Him day in and day in and day out. May, uh, let me ask you, how long has it been since you remembered the Lord? How long has it been since you got out in your face and cried and bawled and weep over a lost soul going to hell? How long has it been since you spent time in the Word of God and got a blessing from the book yourself? How long has it been? My text says, days without number. You know what you need to do? You need to get back to that old-fashioned pearl and get on your knees and say, God, be merciful to me and get your heart right like you've never had it right before. My people, forget me, days without number. Turn to Hosea chapter 8. Turn to Hosea chapter 8. In the book of Hosea, I want you to look at chapter 8, and I want you to look at verse 14. <coughs> Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea. Hosea chapter uh, 8, and let's read verse 14. And it says in verse 14, For Israel hath forgotten his maker. There it is. Somebody again forgetting God. They're forgetting God. Israel hath forgotten his maker. How'd they do it? Let's watch it. And building temples. And building temples. Right there is how they forgot God. You say, what do you mean? They go out here and they build temples. Notice it's temples, plural. Temples. How many temples is there in the Old Testament? One. Then the children of Israel, instead of coming to the one temple and worshiping God, they went out here and built another temple and said, this is the temple of God. Then they went over here and built another one and said, this is the temple of God. They went over here and built another one and said, this is the temple of God. And you know what they were doing all them time building the temples? They'd forgot God. What were they doing? Building a temple to worship God. You know what some folks do? They get in a building program. And they start in that building program. They're going to build a building for God. And they're so busy building that building. They forget God. I've seen that happen. I've seen churches come in. And they get a building program going. And they put up the walls. And put up the roof. And put up the ceiling. And put on the carpet, and they're fighting like a bunch of mad dogs. And they're eating each other up and chewing each other up through the whole building program. And fighting like you've never seen Christians fight in your life. Over what? A building. They forgot God, the building program. They're building the building for God. You know what you do? You get so wrapped up. And what you're doing and so wrapped up in getting what you are got going and getting it through that you forgot all about the Lord. You just do that days without number. You know a guy can do that in building his own house. Get so wrapped up in building that house and building that house and building that. You know what you ought to do? You ought to build a house in your spare time. Nobody's building a house. Good. <laughs> but if you do, brother, you better build a house on your spare time. Serve God 365 days out of the year and then build your house in your spare time as you come through there. Build your house not on God's time, on the spare time. I'll tell you what you do. You go out and build a house, come to church every Sunday. 
You know what some men will do? I say, well, I got to get my house built. You're out there building, building that house, building that house, getting that house built. Come in, spare time to come in and serve God. No Wednesday night service, no prayer meeting, no Sunday morning service. Too busy building the house. Too busy doing your own thing. You forgot about the Lord. Forgot about the Lord. Last of all, turn to Hosea chapter 13 and verse 6. Here's the last thing that causes a man to forget God. Hosea chapter 13 and verse 6 says, According to their pasture, so were they filled. They were filled of the heart was exalted. Therefore have they forgotten me. Notice it says, Therefore have they forgotten me. The therefore. What's the therefore therefore? Well, it says, Their heart was exalted. Their heart was exalted. You know what that is? That's pride. Pride. That old pride coming up and old pride coming up and saying, I'm, I'm somebody. I'm something. I'm, I'm somebody. I'm all right. I'm okay. I'm, a, I'm something. I'm got power. I got authority. I control. You know what that man will do? He'll forget God. He'll forget God. You say, how does it work? God come along and just fill you cup up to the brim, give you all your needs you have, give you a good beautiful house, give you a good car to drive, give you good clothes, give you all the food, just fill you up to the brim. And then the devil come along and say, you done it. You say, sure did. Man, I worked out there, but I sweat on my brow. I got the job done. I got it with it. I've done it. And then you just forget all about the Lord. You don't remember him from New Year's to Thanksgiving to Christmas. And you, sometimes if you get them from year in and year out and year in and year out and year in and year out and some folk gone 10, 15 years and forgot the Lord. Forgot all about God. You say 15 years? 15 years. You say wasted time. Oh, wasted time. Yeah, when you get up to be about 50, 60 years old and finally get your heart right with God Almighty and come back in fellowship with Him, you'll say, Oh, I wasted 10, 15 years. Oh, I wasted 10, 15 years. I tell you, you do. Remember God Sunday in, Sunday out, Sunday in, Sunday out, Sunday in, Sunday out, Sunday in, Sunday out. Not just on Christmas. Not just on Christmas. Amen? You say, Well, preacher, what do I do about it? Come to the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me. I forgot all about you. Forgive me and wash my heart and help me get it right and help me not do it again and help me get a fresh and new start and start anew. You know what God will do? God will let you start anew and afresh. You say, you mean to tell me I can start anew and afresh? Get a second start! A fresh, new and ready for God Almighty and ensure God for the next 20 and 30 years. And then you'll be a blessing to him and a blessing to others. All eyes closed and all heads bowed and Christians praying this morning.